So this is going to be a really quick episode before I leave for ResolveCon. So ResolveCon is a live streaming event all this weekend, October the 1st and 2nd. Register at ResolveCon.com. It's going to be all things DaVinci Resolve. There's tons of us going there and it's going to be Q&A, discussion, tutorials, all that sort of thing. So ResolveCon.com is where you want to go for that. Now I want to just show you, I did a little time lapse thing last week, just for, it was just a bit of fun, but I realized there's a couple of settings that I used and I just want to quickly show you what they were to make that time lapse really really simple in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm in the media page and here are the files that I had. So these are obviously just a series of JPEGs. This was uh, from a time lapse on my camera. So it just took a series of stills and that made a fun little video. So how did I actually create that time lapse in Resolve? Well, what you would do traditionally is take these sequential files and I would, I'm just gonna take a few to start with. I'm gonna drag and drop them into my media pool. And then what I would do is highlight them right click and say create new timeline using selected clips and it would then automatically put them in order and create my time lapse. So let's have a look in the edit page what that looks like. Now the problem I've got is it's put the files in the right order but these are about five seconds each so this is going to be the worst time lapse ever. So how do we make those into single frames is what we really want. So I'm going to delete that, let's get rid of that and I'm going to go back to my media page. Let's in fact delete all this as well and the reason they came in and displayed at five second stills instead of one frame stills is because of a setting we've got in here. So if I go to my preferences and in my editing page, so I'm on the users editing and down here we can set default durations and you see here it says standard still duration is currently set to five seconds. So every time I put a still on the timeline it will create a five second duration. This is great if you're doing titles and things like that but we want it to be single frame. So I could click down here and change that from 10 to be one frame press save and the default is now one frame. So let's bring those files in again, drag and drop them in. Obviously I will take this whole sequence, I've got thousands of them here, and I'm gonna highlight them all, right click and say create new timeline. And it's now, if I go to the edit page, you'll see if I zoom in, that we've actually got a stop frame animation. So these are now one frame, which is exactly what I want. However, there's a more simple way of doing that. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of these and I go to my media page. I'm going to get rid of those as well. And what you'll see is up here, there's three dots. So you've got to be in the media page for this. And there's three dots at the top. And if I click on here, you get this thing called frame display mode. Okay, and that's currently set to auto. Now in auto mode, what it does is it takes JPEG files and puts them in as individual files, as you've just seen me do. So the duration is then set by your preference. However, you can override that. Oh, and what else it does in auto is it will take DPX sequences and create a sequence out of them automatically. So let's override the auto mode. So we've got individual or sequence, okay? So if I flick onto individual mode, it's exactly the same as it was before. It takes each frame and it's represented individually. That means you can also edit each single frame. I might only want this frame, for example. So I could actually take that as a single file. Let me just do that. And that's an individual frame. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is override that. And if I go to frame display mode and change this to be sequence, watch what happens. It now takes my, all of those JPEGs and treats it as if it's a sequence. So now it automatically plays one frame at a time sequentially. The other nice thing about this is I don't have to bring in what would be, well, it's, it's uh, 2,943 frames. This is now just a clip. So bring this in, right click on it, create new timeline, and that's automatically done for me. So go to the edit page and it just sees it as one nice single clip. Okay, and then all I've got to do to that then is change the clip speed. I want it to just run a little bit faster. So right click change clip speed, I think I put it at 800%, and there you go. So now I've got my stop frame animation running much quicker. I could put an adjustment layer on that and put some effects on it, whatever you want to do. I hope to see you at ResolveCon. Don't forget to register at resolvecon.com. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you there.